All right, three different bars. This one right here is 26.98 grams of aluminum. This one right here is made out of copper, and this one is 63.55 grams. And this one here is made out of zinc, and it's 65.38 grams. Give or take a little bit. So each of those is the relative mass that's on the periodic table. So from the fact that each of these has the relative mass, what I can infer from that is that each one of these has the exact same number of particles present. That number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum, atoms of zinc, and atoms of copper. Now they don't all have the same mass because an aluminum particle is a different mass than a zinc particle by this particular ratio, by a ratio of 65.38 to 26.98. So what I want to do is take that and give it a little framework here for how to do some conversions involving grams and moles and things like that. So we've set up three different questions. The first two in black and blue here are change that into moles. Okay. So 12.0 grams of argon change to moles. And the process we're going to do for this is we're going to take the units and the chemical and we're going to copy both down to the line below. It's important to put both because you want to be organized with your work so that when you're making mistakes you can easily figure out what to do to change that. Now if you're not in moles, the first thing you're going to do is change two moles. So we're going to change from grams to moles. And one mole of anything in terms of mass we can find on the periodic table. So we're going to flip back to here and look at argon. This is right here, which is 39.948. We're going to round that to two decimal places. So 39.95. So what that number means is that there are 39.95 grams of argon per mole of argon or per 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of argon. So what I can do with that is I can take that and just, I can take my grams of argon and in terms of units, these cancel with these and I'm left with moles of argon. And then to figure out my numerical amount, I can take 12.0 times 1 divided by 39.95 comes out to be 0 0.3, and then I need three six six point three zero zero moles of argon. Okay. And the second one here, I have 4 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of bromine. So again, I'm going to take the units, the molecules, along with the chemical, put them there. Now I'm not in moles, so I want to change to moles. Don't confuse that just because there's a mole written there. So one mole of anything is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power of those things. So I'm gonna take this four times 10 to the 22, and I'm gonna divide it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. When you do that, really important in your calculator that you put that in parentheses so that the 10 to the 23rd doesn't move up to the numerator. So I end up with 0 0.066 moles of bromine. So for that one, I don't even need to look at the molar mass because I don't deal with any grams. Okay. Then, the last one here, we've got 127 grams of N2O4. So we're going to take that and we're going to put grams of N2O4 down here, one mole of N2O4 up here. So for molar mass, we're going to have to flip to the other side. We need N2O4. So we need two of these, four of those. So we've got 14.01 times 2, and then we've got 16.00 times 4. We're going to add all of that up. And that comes out to be 92.02 grams per mole. We can fill that in 92.02 grams of N2O4 per 1 mole of N2O4. So if we take 127 divided by this, that's going to give us the moles of N2O4. And I want to do this one step further. I want to figure out how many molecules there are. And if we're changing to molecules, we would use the fact that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything in one mole of that thing. All right, so I would go ahead and do 127 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and then I would divide by 92.02, and that gives me 8.31 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of N2O4. Now hypothetically, let's say they asked the question, they said, how many atoms are there? 
Well, in each one molecule, we have two nitrogen atoms and four oxygen atoms. We can multiply that by six, which would give us, you know, 4.9, 5.0 times 10 to the 24, somewhere in there. So this is how I recommend organizing your work, especially if you're struggling with how to do this. If you get the whole idea of like when to multiply and when to divide, you maybe don't need this, but if you're not getting things correct, you definitely want to write out the units, definitely write out the chemical, and start to go with, am I in grams, or I'm sorry, am I in moles, yes or no, if you're in moles, change, change to whatever you're looking for, if you're not in moles, change to moles. If you need to do two steps like here, go ahead and do two steps like this.